By popular request, here is my review on Kuban 2 at 13.10. Now I left this a bit late to do, and in fact I was just going to skip it entirely. So what I'm actually going to do this video is just keep it a bit shorter, I'm going to focus mainly on the changes and the issues I've had with it. Now one of the main issues I did have was where it randomly freezes and doesn't accept any keyboard input. The mouse continues to work quite bizarrely, and it continues to function with just the mouse. But it just sits there fat dumb and happy and doesn't listen to the keyboard. So I don't understand what that's all about. You couldn't even get into a TTY console. Now I did have a look on Google and found a lot of people were reporting an issue with it happening around startup time, but mine happened a bit later than startup time as well, so I'm not quite sure. I couldn't pinpoint exactly when it was happening. Another problem I had was with the driver installer. When opening up Jockey, it didn't recognise any hardware at all. It just, again, sat there and fat dumb and happy and didn't do anything. But when I went and installed the drivers manually through the Moon Package Manager, and then went back into Jockey, it said, oh yeah, these are the drivers that are installed. Why didn't it just tell me I required them in the first place? I didn't understand that. It was all very weird. But if I look back at Kuban 2.13.04, that was horrendously unstable with, with the kernel. So in some ways, Kuban 2.13.10 is an improvement. But let's take a more of a look at it. Let's start with one of the new default installed applications called Moon Discover. And this is another software center. It was available in Kubuntu 13.04, but wasn't installed by default. Now what I'm finding with this software center, it's one of the fastest to open out of the Ubuntu range. So yeah, I clicked on VLC here, and we've got the star ratings and reviews. So that's very nice. Uh, I can just click over to reviews, then click install. Asks for your password, and then it does a job of installing it. So if I do a search, uh, let's say for Steam. Come on. I typed it quicker than that. Uh, there's no Steam installer here. It's not too much of a disadvantage, though, because the .db files are available from Steam. I think to install Steam through the Ubuntu Software Center, you have to go through one of the other repositories. One noticeable update in the Amarok audio player is it now displays a waveform while you're playing a song. You can see the waveform displaying there, and, and there's now a fade out as well. You can also use other themes on the waveform. So it is quite a nice new effect there. There's been a change to the network manager, and one of the new features actually appears in the system installer. So if when you're trying to use a wireless network connection, although I didn't test that part, uh, I've actually connected to a wireless network here. I click on the connection, you get more information, and you can also dig down and see more information about it. So edit the connection. Um, yeah, Looking there at previous connections, you can see I've got the wired connection, and unknown connections is other wireless connections. Another new feature is the user manager. Come on, it's been a bit slow to respond again. I don't get it. Sometimes it responds really quickly, and then other times it just delays. What are you doing? What are you thinking about? Do something! No, just not taking anything now. I'm typing. Let's restart. Why does it hang sometimes? I don't get it. Anyway, I can't really remember what the user manager was like before, so I can't really tell you how much it's different. So, But it all seems nice and easy to use. Let's try and take a quick look at the system monitor. It's not being very responsive again. So what is the issue with this? CPU usage, very minimal. System load, it's really not that bad at all. So I don't know why it's being particularly slow to respond. Here's what I thought of Kuban 2 13.10. Well, it's good to see the new Moon Discover software center installed by default. Now I think that's quite a fast opening software center. I think it actually beats Ubuntu and the Lubuntu software centers. However, the actual usage of it does seem to be a little bit slower. And it's good to see that we've got the new network and user managers. However, the Issues that I've had with it were the random freezing, where the operating system just didn't accept any input from the keyboard. As I mentioned, I couldn't even get into the TTY console, so I couldn't do anything. However, I could click down to the 
KDE menu and go to shutdown and restart. And that would happen perfectly fine. So <laughs> what was that all about? But other people have reported it happening around boot up time. And also had issues with the jockey driver installer not correctly identifying the drivers required for my system. However, I could manually install the drivers through the Moon package manager. Now overall with the system, it's about one second slower to boot than Kubuntu 13.04 was. I think the base memory usage is a bit lower as well. In fact, that memory usage is actually lower than Zubuntu. So what's going on there? What have Zubuntu got and done? Anyway, if you are happy running Kubuntu 13.04 and you don't have any of the stability issues, what I would recommend is you actually continue to use it through the life of 13.04, which is until about December 2013. Then you're probably going to have to upgrade to 13.10 because 13.04 is end of life. But if you were having stability issues, then perhaps Kubuntu 13.10 is worth upgrading to. That's my advice there. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.